Welcome back, aviation enthusiasts and uh, fellow aircraft builders. Uh, I'm going to give you a little few tips here on using your bending brake. Um, I've used the, uh, this bending brake to do the bulk of my, my build. Um, it's a modified version of Dave Clay's angle iron bending brake. And I've, I've talked about it a little bit before, but it's made out of three pieces of uh, three inch angle iron, uh, just your hot rolled steel. Um, this is the bending arm here. This is the um, bed or rest or clamping surface. And then I've got a, a one by four piece of solid oak. It's a red oak trim that I've um, mitered and put a radius in on each, each side. So on this side back here, this is the one eighth inch radius that you build, you, know, you use for most of your most of your build. And then this front nose here currently is a quarter inch radius that I put in. I can flip the whole board around. I can use it to uh, bend the quarter inch radius stuff on some of the thicker materials. So last night for the first time I used it uh, to bend some quarter inch radius stuff. And one of the first parts I did was the uh, horizontal stabilizer bracket here. See it puts a nice large sweeping quarter inch radius in it. Uh, and I can bend, over bend it to the proper angle. So this was actually a, a, quite an easy piece to make. It's only about five inches along the radius to bend and it's not actually curved. That's uh, just because of the GoPro lens here. But And uh, it made a nice easy bend. Didn't put any strain hardly at all on the bending brake. Now that part is made out of 63 thousandths, which is the thickest of the stuff that you're really gonna use as a substantially sized piece. Everything else that's in the plane that's thicker than that is basically like a small fitting or something and you, you need a very heavy duty brake to bend those bigger thicker pieces but i gave it a shot with this uh dave clay's brake and ran into a, a big problem when i tried to bend this upper flange here i just had it clamped just that portion of it clamped in the against the bending nose and tried to bend it up and uh, because this stuff this 63 thousandths this is the upper firewall channel because this is so thick it really, really resists bending until it finally gives and then it bends. Well, trying to bend this little flange here, it uh, it popped out of the brake and smacked me right in the forehead. <laughs> so uh, there just isn't enough clamping force on this to hold that in place on that little, you know, little bit of flange material that you've got there to really get it up there and, and bend it. And it also weakened my bending brake. So before I realized that, however, I flipped this around and this has got a 36 millimeter flange on it. Very substantial, very robust. And uh, it definitely has plenty of clamping force to hang onto that while you bend this part up. But the problem I ran into is this is so difficult to bend that when I, when I bend, when I was lifting up and trying to bend it like this, I was actually lifting the entire table this end of the table completely off the ground and my table's 12 feet long and it's very heavy i was really really wrenching on this trying to get it bent and it just wouldn't go any farther than this without pulling the table off the ground with it in addition to that what i didn't realize was uh, as you can see here in the hinge when i try to pull the hinge out you see how it's starting to slide away it's totally pulling itself away from this piece of angle here this gap gets gigantic it and you can kind of see it widen up right there. This stuff is so strong that it's actually pulling, and I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's pulling my hinges out, uh, my rivets, my pop rivets out. I riveted this together with the, I think they're A5 rivets, um, and it's just a cheap, uh, this piano hinge isn't stainless steel or anything fancy, it's actually just a cheap six foot piano hinge from I think Home Depot or Lowe's but it just this brake can't can't manage with this so what I'm gonna try to do I'm gonna drill out all those rivets I'm gonna replace them with solid bucked rivets uh, because since I'm plans building I've got a I, I ended up breaking down and buying a solid rivet gun to do my wing spars and my cabin sides and so um, I figure just drilling these, because I have to fix it anyway, I can't use it like this. That's one of the reasons the radius here is off, but it's fine on the other side. I've, I've got to repair the clamping force on the rivets, and that means drilling those out and replacing them. So I'm going to drill them all out, replace them all with buck rivets. Those will be substantially stronger. 
And I'm going to give it one other shot, and hopefully I can bend, finish bending this material. This is one of the longest bends you have to make. There's probably half a dozen parts in the airplane made out of 63 thousandths that have around a 1,000 to 1,100 millimeter length in them, where this is only about 850. So uh, if I can get this bent successfully and it doesn't look like it's going to damage the hinge and put in too much strain or break the hinge, I may go ahead and try to bend some of those longer parts. But this really as the, the brake is built currently, it, it's just too much. So the other um, thing that I want to point out, if you do a bending nose like I've done here, if you do a shoe and you do a quarter inch round and an eighth inch round on one side, instead of using just this surface as your bending nose, um, when you're bending some of your tighter channels, some of the stuff that, you know, you might have a, a piece of U channel that you have to bend up that, that has a fairly small uh, width to it, uh, it's really difficult to do that because of the height of this thing. So um, when the metal folds over, like for example on the, the 63 thousandths, you know, when I bent, if I bent one side at a 90 degree and then I've got to come and bend the other side, because this is a tall part, it clears this area just fine. But a very narrow channel uh, won't clear this area here and so you end up having to do uh, some hand forming or some hand squeezing to get the part because you can only bend it so far before it run in, runs into this and it can't go any farther. So it's just one caution if you use this method, but uh, at least it allows me to um, have both bending radius uh, options with the shoe. And the other thing I can do is actually take the shoe out of there and put this down and then match drill it again so that this becomes the bending shoe only, and that helps too. So you can make this uh, design a little more flexible uh, with the bending shoe option, and then if you need to, uh, have a you know a, a thin piece that you have to bend all the way down you can do it with that now the other problem you run into when you're trying to uh, bend pieces like that have a complex sort of geometry to them um, I'll show you there's a couple of channels in here so here's the heel support for the plane and the finished bend is you can see here there's a you know it looks like a um, section with two little flanges on it so you got to bend the channel and then you bend the little 18 millimeter flanges after that on a bending brake like this you can't you can't bend that kind of a part because you have this big long flat section here so there's no place to put that overlapping channel to bend it the last final time and in fact that's one of the things you have to do on the um, flapper on or excuse me the slat skins require a similar uh, a similar type of bend. So here's the bend pattern for the slat skin. So getting this this bend in there and this bend in there, that's all no problem. Getting this bend in there is no problem, but then you have to bend another 18 millimeter flange over. So if you don't have a way to compensate for some of this um, material that you've already bent, you know, where is it going to go in the brake allowing you to bend this piece because the bending arm that you're going to use to bend that up, you know, things have to be clamped in a certain place and, you know, they have to fit on that brake. So, you know, the three inch bending arm here and here, you know, where's that going to go? You just can't, you can't put it in there. So I have to figure out a way to clamp and bend this flange with this other stuff already bent or, you know, figure out which order I can do it in. But this part right here is going to be the difficult part. All the rest of this, this is no problem. But this part right here is going to be the difficult part, and I have to come up with an alternative method. So I plan on uh, filming that when I figure it out and showing you how to do it. Uh, but the same problem is going to go for, you know, these, uh, these channels uh, and supports and stuff that you have to, have to build, um, you know, like this. I, I haven't, really just don't know how I'm going to do that. You can do them in a press brake, but I don't have a press brake. So, uh, and then something like this where you've got a cabin floor stiffener. You know, you can you can bend that middle angle just fine, but then how do you how do you bend these up when there's no place for your bending arm to go when you try to try to bend those? So, just things to consider. Uh, I'm going to work on some solutions for that. I haven't seen anything online that anybody's done yet to do those, but I'm going to work on that and see what I can come up with. So, anyway, uh, just some tips for bending brakes, and you know how and you you can build in some flexibility on your bending brake if you build your own. Uh, one thing to remember is if you're building a Zenith 750, 
Uh, make it a nine foot break, not an eight foot break like mine is because you've got three spars that are all longer than eight feet. And uh, it's pretty disheartening when you put the, that metal on the brake and realize you've got three inches hanging over, off of each, each edge of the bending brake that aren't going to get bent. So I had a fortunate uh, circumstance where I uh, became friends with a guy that has a 10 foot brake and he allowed me to use that for my three bends. But uh, at any rate, thanks for watching. Good luck with your projects and uh, let me know if you have any questions.